Welcome. This is a wee bit of alchemy, and I'm Rick Barrett. Uh, this week, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to return to the macrocosmic orbit by request, and to actually do a little exploration on that again to actually get the get the chi moving, and then we're going to continue our exploration into. Uh, uh, the elements, and actually, maybe we'll start with the with, with that first, kind of putting a context in it, and then we can go from there, and then do the uh, uh, do the uh, the macrocosmic orbit. So the uh, uh, just to review, we've been talking about learning to make distinctions in qualities of energy, and um, you know, as I said before, it was like you know, in my discovery is like first of all is you know recognizing that there is chi what is what that means and the feeling of of energy and um, and after that it became like oh okay less and more and so learning that there is a a continuum or a spectrum of of chi how much and how little and um, then going from there it's like the next big distinction was yin and yang. Yang being the expansive, shiny, opening, effervescent energy, and yin being the consolidative, the condensing, uh, going from, from expansion into form, creating form. So they are both two sides of one coin. And just depending on your perspective, what you're looking for in the moment, you're going to get yin or yang. And you can focus and draw a distinction so that, oh, this energy is more. This is 60% yang, 40% yin, or 80% yang, 20% yin, et cetera. You can kind of go that uh, depending on how you, what is the appropriate energy for the situation? And um, the yin feeds the yang. So if you are just go, 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 then you, which a lot of us are, we kind of get attracted to the, the bright lights and shiny objects and we kind of push, push, push. And that's all yang, yang, yang. And if you don't fill up, if you don't honor that process of bringing in the nurturing, then you're going to run out of gas. And then you're going to kind of be pulling out of resources um, that um, exhaust you. And you kind of create this, this state where you are depleted. So um, being able to get into that, into the yin, that's where we enter into the stillness also. We, we, we mobilize the chi before we do. We, we mobilize, we get the energy going, and then we act. And if we can learn to do that, then the actions become much more effective. They become much more mindful, conscious, intentional, and also much more effective whenever we do that. So the learning to be able to distinguish that. And also you can kind of like, you know, the yin is like pulling back the bowstring. And this is what creates that, that polarity there, that creates that, that opposition, which generates energy. So that the yang part, whenever you release the bowstring, it just it seem, seems to just happen whenever that you, you do that. But it's when seen as part of, a whole system, it is something that you intentionally set up. You set it up so that you, you know, you pull back the bowstring so, so that you can release it. And it's not an, um, an isolated thing where the yang is just like, oh, I'm just passively being part of this process. It's like, no, no, it, you did it. You did the whole thing, you set it up. So that's what we're trying to do in the, uh, in the internal arts is to be able to mindfully create that the interplay, that dynamic interplay between the, the yin and the yang. So we go from the Taiji, which is the undifferentiated wholeness, 
to then we split it apart and do this little dance, yin yang dance, and that creates the energy that enables us to do cool stuff. And once we get the, that distinction there between yin and yang, then you can start looking at different ways of examining other qualities of energy. And you know, one of the common ways both East and West is having the uh, uh, five elements. And the West is earth, water, fire, air, and ether. And in the Chinese model, it's, it's water, wood, fire, earth, and metal. And it, um, each of them has its own quality, its own characteristics, and its association in both those systems, association with specific parts of the body. So we're, right now, we're just focusing on the Chinese model. And we've covered in the last two weeks, we covered wood, or first metal, which is the characteristic of fall and has to do with the lungs. And um, then we move to wood, which is the uh, season we're in right now, which is the characteristic of, of um, spring. Although we're kind of right on the edge of moving into to summer here pretty soon. So it's, uh, uh, but it, we're at the tail end of, 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 the, of the, the wood season. And um, wood is expansive, it's directional. It's, it's going from yin, to yang, it's going from, you know, the yin of winter to the yang of summer, uh, whereas metal is going from the yang of summer into the yin of winter. So it's we have this this dynamic, and so uh, between the the wood and the metal, we have the winter, and and the element there is is water. And so I want to talk a bit about water, get that, because that's going to kind of guide our meditation tonight and we'll get us to explore that a bit, the feeling of water. So the uh, organs, the Chinese, in the Chinese medical model, the uh, organs the, uh, related to water are the uh, kidneys and the bladder. And um, the kidneys, uh, uh, I think have a have a very special place in the the Chinese medical model and and also in the Chinese esoteric community because it's about that's where your life force is they say stored but you can say that it's a um, it is a necessary part of that it has to do with also letting go it has to do with with releasing both both the bladder and the and the kidneys, like consciously regulating what you keep and what you uh, what you throw away. So it's a um, um, the emotions to that are associated with water are fear and courage, and. Um, also, the idea of will. So your your will has to do with with your kidneys. And this is kind of related to fear and courage, because if you your kidney energy is low, then you uh, you don't have that that drive your uh, to to push on through to execute. So will is basically having the intention to do something and then doing it. And if you cannot formulate an intention, if you're constantly equivocating, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. On the other hand, da, 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 then it's indi indicative of low kidney energy. And that also affects your, your courage and, and fear. If you are don't have that, that strong life force, then it's harder to muster up the courage to, to keep it going, 
to uh, to get to do what needs to get done. And so you can see that that courage, fear has a lot to do with the will. And so there's a uh, the energy is um, replenished through the kidneys in, in, the, in, the, in the energetic model. And so there's a, a cycle that, that these things follow. They follow the cycle of the seasons. So the, the organs feed each other in, the, in, this, in this model. And it's something that, um, that maybe we'll just do it right now, just as a, uh, as a little exercise. And you go from kidney, that kidney, that will, that, that decisiveness, it feeds into the liver, which is the element of springtime. It's also uh, the emotion of anger or determination or you know, a, uh, an impulse to get something done. And that feeds into the heart, which is joy. And the, the negative aspect of that would be sort of a dissatisfaction or an unhappiness that, uh, um, so the, that with, with, with that, so a deficiency in the heart energy would be like that, that, you know, kind of a, a, a disillusionment, uh, an unhappiness. And then, but the um, joy, so the, the, way it works is like you know the anger of the of the spleen or the uh, the liver goes into the heart and the joy then you have this happy anger which is what you're cultivating as a martial artist that you're like ah you know oh boy you know ah you know and you're having there's a lot of you know juice with that and so from the uh from from that from the heart, <coughs> you go down to the uh, to the spleen, and this is more equanimity, and uh, the negative side of that is worry, and um, but that's that's the earthy bring it all together integration etc. The that then feeds into the lungs, which is metal, which the emotion of, about that uh, concerning that is grief, which is the negative side. But you can also think of it as the positive side would be a conscious letting go, a willingness to release that which is not uh, no longer serves you. You can also you think of it in terms of forgiveness, that is releasing old ideas, emotions, uh, grudges, whatever, that no longer serve you. So you can, oh, I can let that go. So the, uh, you can see that. So the going from the uh, spleen to the lungs and from the lungs then to the kidneys. And that metal goes from yang to back to yin and then we're back to the cycle go again so what we will do we're going to just do it a, a very short exercise but it's uh uh something that um master uh, young fu kui um talks about a lot he says like this you this is really the secret to be able to get the energy moving correctly through the whole system and supported by the season so that you're honoring the season so in springtime you're feeling woody you're feeling expansive so you you get into that right you 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 push forward um so but individually you can also focus on these organs and they will feed each other, this is a constructive cycle or a, a nourishing cycle, and the one will feed the feed the next, and then so to feed the kidney, you actually have to go through that whole cycle, and the kidney sort of is the uh, uh, the big reward for for having completed the cycle, is you get a nice uh, bit of kidney uh, jing there that uh, that allows you to fill up 
with more Elan Vital. So uh, we'll do this one sitting or standing, whatever you like. But the basic idea is we're going to start and we'll just take a, breath, a breath and you're going to feel into that part of your body, that organ. So we'll start with the kidney and you just breathe in. And just bring your awareness to the kidneys. And take a couple of breaths. And just feel into that part of your body. And from the kidney, go to the liver. And the liver, if you, uh, you missed anatomy class, it's on the, the right side, right at the... Uh, at the, the bottom part of the uh, rib cage. And breathe into that. And that's the wood chi. It's also anger or determination. Now take that to the heart, which is joy. Good. And now to the spleen, which is right, uh, right around the stomach. So there, so you uh, breathe into that. And this is earth equanimity, integration, stability. <clears throat> And to the lungs, this is metal, letting go. Metal is also very mental. It's discerning, it's discriminating. It, it's like a knife, it cuts. Very intellectual. And bring it back to the kidneys. Okay, one more time around from the kidneys to the liver. From the liver to the heart. From the heart to the spleen. From the spleen to the kidneys, I mean spleen to the lungs. And from the lungs to the kidneys. Okay. 
Good. You want to do this consciously a few times. We'll do it for regularly for a while, just so you can get familiar with that, with that sequence. And you kind of set up an algorithm so it's sort of you can go there immediately. It doesn't take a lot to circulate the energy because you're you establish the pathways, the consciousness to bringing bringing the consciousness to that so that it becomes a well-traveled path and 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 it seem, it nourishes the whole system. Let's go back to water for a moment and uh, um, the um, um, there's a almost a cliche now, but the, uh, a um, a Bruce Lee quote that, you know, uh, be like water. And uh, I'm going to paraphrase because I don't remember the quote exactly, but it's like water fills, water fills a cup, it becomes a cup. Water fills a bottle, it fills, it, it becomes a bottle. Water fills a tea kettle, it feels like it fills a tea kettle. It, it can flow or it can crash. And so that's that's water. That the, the uh, so the it the the quality in water is that it's it's fluid, but it also has the capacity to to condense into form so that it's has immense power. It can be very directed or it can be diffuse, depending on your intention. Um, there is a tendency to take from that that I should just kind of go with the flow and kind of just become very passive. And that's not at all what the water element's about. It, it's about still using your intention, your will to make something happen, but it's also the ability to choose which form you're going to take to make that work. So it's not rigid at all. It's, you know, very, very different from say wood, which is very directed. It's moving in a, uh, it's moving in a line, originating at a point and going extending to another point. Whereas water can go any direction. But it does have an intention just like a you know, a um, uh, like a flash flood, right? There's very powerful, very directed, and um, even though it's moving around things and through things and over things, it's still it's uh, it's moving in a, in a in a direction. So you can can take that. So getting that quality in your body is um, it's a kind of the essence of Tai Chi, the ability to become that fluid and yet be able to assume a form to get the job done, assume whatever form is necessary to get the job done. So uh, before we get started uh, do, doing any, an exercise, any questions, thoughts, complaints, Rick? There we go. Yes, when we when I went to the liver for the first time, yes. I felt I felt a pointer, a a a pencil right here. Never felt that before. Hmm. It was very active. Is that a is that a connection? I don't know. Okay, fair enough. I'll look I'll look more into it. But that was the first time that's ever happened. Found it fascinating. Thank you. Okay. You bet. I don't know my, if, if there's a connection. A direct connection or not, but that's that's interesting. Um, anybody else questions, thoughts? Um, are you are you getting on there, Stan? Yes. Hey. Okay. Uh, with the breathing into the into the particular organ, uh, 
I'm not sure how to take the uh, going through it once from uh, you know each in turn. Just breathe into that organ, and when it's time comes, just breathe directly. Or do I uh, sort of feel no. like it's going from the first organ into the next? Don't. What what you do? You feel the organ. Okay. You feel that location in your body. You're not pushing the energy into it. You're just feeling it. Okay. The energy will follow your intent. Oh, okay. So in other words, you, you can actually touch your heart, right? And say, yeah. And breathe and, and just bring your awareness to that because the, the, the mind leads the chi and the chi leads the, the blood. So you're going to, it's going to go there. So there's no forcing, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're leading rather than, you know, pushing the energy along or anything. You just, just good. It's a good question. Thank you. That's, a, that's something a lot of people have, uh, have a challenge with, but you don't, you don't have to do it. I mean, you know, as you're doing the, the thing, you know, oh, I'm going to breathe into, you know, I'm going to feel my, my liver. Great. I'll just breathe and feel my liver and the cheese is going to go there. Okay. Okay. If Very I say if I say breathe into your liver, you know that's just because it's a um, you know it's sort of a shorthand, but it's uh, it's not really happening that way. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Anybody else, Scott? I just have to say, whenever I um, whenever I focus on the kidneys, um, I just like fill with this, you know really strong energy it's uh really cool right that's uh that's 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 very cool because that's that's something you want to uh you want want to get going you know it uh and it's not organ dependent because you, you only need one kidney uh and I, I will attest to that and uh it uh you uh you know your your kidney chi can be as strong as ever, so you don't you don't need uh, the the organ itself is is not uh, is not as important. Sharon, you have something? Yes, um, I did put my hand on each of the organs, and that that really facilitates me getting there quicker. And for Great. myself, it left me feeling very balanced. Great, great. That's, that's what we're hoping for. You know, just getting that. You know that that whole cycle together, it just feeds feeds the whole system. Everybody get everybody gets uh, gets a taste. Everybody's happy, and oh yeah, everybody gets a present at Christmas. So it's it's, it's <laughs> so that's that's cool. Okay, let's do the. Uh, we'll start with the uh, the macrocosmic orbit, and then we're going to go into uh, into uh, water. Uh, element exercise. Uh, you can do a little more. A little more light? I think so. That's good. Okay, there we go. So let's uh, begin. Uh, Carl down, step out, bearing, and gonna establish the three pillars. So feel the balls of your feet. Feel the weight spreading throughout the foot, but centered in the balls of the feet. Feel the, feel the floor with your toes. No force, just, just touching, feeling that. Feel your heel. But also feel really centered at the balls of the feet. Knees are unlocked. Reach with the crown of your head. 
Tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate. At the base of your skull. Relax your lower back and allow your coccyx to drop. You're kind of reaching down to the, toward the earth with your coccyx. And this is the Wei Lu point. You want to feel an opposition between the crown of the head, the Ni Wan, and the Wei Lu, the coccyx. So that, that, what that does, it lengthens the spine, opens the space between the vertebrae, and unkinks the dural tube allows the cerebral spinal fluid to flow more freely. Reach with your elbows, opening the shoulder joints. The shoulders are relaxed. Point your index fingers. Feel the chi in your hands. So you're releasing the hip joints, being nice and relaxed. So we're unkinking the hose throughout the body at the shoulders by reaching with the elbows, at the jade pillow gate by reaching with the crown of the head. And we're unkinking the qua by getting very sung. Releasing down. Sink, bow forward. Let's come up. Reaching with the elbows. Relaxing the shoulders. Reaching with the fingers, the wrists. Open. Feel the expansion, feel the yang chi opening. Your, reach down with your elbows, your wrists, your hands, condensing. Feel the yin, condensing into form. Everything very soon, releasing. Reach with your elbows, your wrists. Open. Feel the young. The expansive. Reach up with the knee one. Reach up to meet the heavens. Feel the yang chi of the heavens. Coming down through the crown of the head. Down through your body and out through the, the soles of your feet. Sink, elbows, wrists. Feel the yin. Condensing.
gathering. Bring your hands down. Uh, what makes this a macrocosmic orbit is that we are plugged into the big chi, different than the microcosmic orbit, which is very localized within the within the body. We're opening up to the big chi. We're feeding constantly, exchanging energy with the earth and the heavens. The yin chi of the earth coming up through the balls of the feet, through the uh, bubbling well. Yang Chi of the heavens coming down to the crown of the head. Now we're just going to unkink the hose at a very subtle level by following the path of the great central channel. The governing vessel and the conception vessel. So we'll start and you can touch it if you if it if it helps to touch your way Lu the at the very base of the coccyx. And take a breath and feel into that. And you can bring your hand up opposite your navel to your Ming men, the gate of life around the third lumbar. Breathe into that. Next one, uh, you're a lot more flexible than me if you can reach there, but between your shoulder blades. Then up to the um, up to the base of the of the neck, the big knob there. Feel into that, touch that. You can breathe and bring your awareness there. Next, come up to the jade pillow gate, right at the base of the skull. up to the crown of the head. Feel that. A couple inches forward of that, there you got your Bai Hui. GV20, I think. Breathe into that. Feel that as you breathe. Come down to your upper Dantian, your third eye. Your upper lip just under your nose. Keep the tip of your tongue on the roof of your mouth, making the connection between the conception and vessel and the governing vessel. We're going from the concept, this is the end of the conception or the governing vessel. We're gonna jump down to just under the lower lip. And this is the conception vessel.
come down to the base of the throat, down here to the, um, the um, what's it called? Right there at the bottom, at the top of your rib cage. Down to the heart, the middle dantian. Down to the navel. Lower abdomen, your lower dantian. And now to your hui yin at the uh, perineum between your anus and your genitals. And just lift gently on the pelvic floor. Good. Now, um, do another round. And this time you want to, as you inhale, you lift gently on the pelvic floor. You keep the tongue on the roof of the mouth. So feel the Weilu at the coccyx. Feel the Ming Men at the third lumbar. Feel the area between your shoulder blades opposite your heart. Feel the um, um, T1, the first thoracic vertebra at the base of the neck. Feel the jade pillow gate. Feel the crown of the head. Feel the bai hui. Feel the upper dantian. Feel the point under your nose of your upper lip. Feel the point between your chin and your lower lip. Feel the thoracic inlet this point right here. Feel the middle dantian. Feel the navel.
Feel the lower Dantian. Feel the Hui in. Now feel all those points simultaneously without thinking about it. Step in. Deep breath. And disappear the chi. Exhale. Yeah. All right, let's do a, uh, a, a water meditation. Barrel down, step out. Sink. Very fluid. Very adaptive, Feel, breathe in, hands come up. Exhale. Rotate, forearms, palms down. Reach out, bending at the qua as you reach forward, opening, feeling extension from your feet, up your legs, up your back, shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers. And, uh, um, Bend your knees, sink down, touch your feet. And slowly come up, feel your ankles, your knees, your thighs, hips. Feel coming up your spine, shoulders, elbows, wrists. Fingers, reach, open, breathe. And bow, hands come down. Touch your feet. Drop your head. Slowly coming up, feet, ankles, knees, thighs, hips, abdomen, chest, spine, shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers, reach. And bow one more time.
feet, ankles, knees, thighs, hips, abdomen, chest, shoulders, elbows, wrists, reach. Coming up. Feel the flow. Feel the movement of all the liquids in your body. Think, step in, deep breath. And disappear the chi. Dissolve into the emptiness. Let go. Let everything flush out. Let go of anything you don't need. Allow the energy to do the work, the nature chi, to heal what needs healed, repair what needs repaired, rejuvenate, restore, renew. Okay, grab a seat. Get time for a couple of questions and comments. Sharon. Um, just a comment uh, from myself when we were playing with the uh, micro orbit. Yep. When, when we, at the end, when we did everything together, I became so much bigger than my own body. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think I just it felt like I expanded and, and so <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. That's great. <laughs> uh, Rick. Who needs a sauna and pool? I don't need a sauna and pool anymore. At the beginning of it, just all this heat. And at the end of this, all this cool. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Anybody else? Scott. It's just um, sometimes when we're doing these, I get in my head and I just... I'm like, you know, pretty much don't get it. Uh, um, I've been, you know, just got out of my head and wow. It was really, uh, yeah, feeling all the different energies and that was. <laughs> way, way, yeah, I, I can't really make words right now, but way cool. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a big tour. You got yeah. <laughs> uh, Richard. Uh, two things. One, um, I, this is the thickest I've ever had my chi body. It was mm. almost difficult to move through it. Uh, <laughs> and the other thing was just a question about the um, about the uh, direction of the circle of the macro of the uh, my, the governing vessel and the conception vessel. We came up the back. Is that the, is that the way routinely to do it instead of up from the conception vessel? Um, 
it's the way I generally do it. Um, I think traditionally, if you come up the front, it's Buddhist. If you come up the back, it's Taoist. But that's, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if, if that there is any merit to that distinction. But uh, um, the advantage of coming up the back, and I, I think uh, I'm going to refer to Yang Jing Ming on, on, on this. Uh, you come up the back, you, you start there. It's, it's an easy jump to, to go from the governing vessel, conception vessel, that, that whole thing, which is kind of surface to the penetrating vessel, which goes up the spine and into the brain. And this is where you are nourishing the brain. So um, um, you start at the Hui Yin, you bring it up through the spine, and and you bring it into the uh, into the brain. And by bringing it, I mean you're you're using your attention to do it. So uh, so if you um, and I I have to say I you know I do this a lot. It uh, you know there's uh, it's, it's a, a modified version of you know brain marrow washing. So it, it, there's a core, close um, association between the bone marrow and, and the brain, and both are fed by this, by the uh, penetrating vessel, the thrusting vessel. So uh, that's the, uh, maybe more information than you wanted there, but that, <laughs> that's, uh, that's my take on it. Uh, it works for me to do it that way. And uh, you know, it's it's an easy jump for me to go from from the governing vessel into the 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 thrusting vessel and just zing. You know, it it you really you get the zing, and that's uh, that, that's kind of nice. It's it's you know got that it's in the name there, thrusting vessel, penetrating vessel. You know, it's like it's got a lot of it. There's a lot of uh, that that element to it. Cool. Anybody else, Scott? Oh. Just personally, for me personally, I find going up the back is much more grounding and rooting. And when I go up the front, it kind of takes me out of my root and makes me floaty. And I don't think that's where you want to be when you're doing this. And I think that, that I think that's what they're getting at with that. With the with the the Buddhist idea is a sort of an ascending path kind of a thing where you're you're trying to become nothing. And uh, and uh, whereas the Taoist is sort of getting both getting you know getting integrating both the yin and the yang and so the up and the, the ascending and the descending simultaneously so i think that's uh that's the effect it has for me also and i may be out of my uh out of my depth here commenting on that but that's uh that's my my take on it as well and it's certainly the way i feel whenever i do it so yes cool anybody else all good. Great. Thank you all so much. Love you. Love you. Thanks, Thank Rick. You. Thanks, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rick and Maria. Thank you. Love you guys.